Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? I'm off the grid for August, but fear not, CNN is still a far left activist organization pretending to be a journalistic outfit. Richie Greenberg walked into a San Francisco Walgreens when he saw in the frozen food section this. Chains, heavy chains that went from padlock to padlock on both sides of the doors. And this was bizarre, something I'd never seen before. This is just more icing on the cake telling us that rampant crime is, is, has become a, a regular part of life. So typical that in the 30 minutes we were at this Walgreens, we watched three people, including this man, steal. Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? He didn't pay. Walgreens says this Richmond neighborhood store with aisles of products like mustard locked behind plexiglass has the highest theft rate of all their nearly 9,000 U.S. stores, hit more than a dozen times a day. When thieves turned to cleaning out ice cream and frozen burritos, workers grew so frustrated they resorted to the chains. They were ordered down by corporate because of the negative messaging. But Walgreens isn't the only retailer impacted in San Francisco. You have to ask an employee for help. At this store, frozen food is controlled with a cable lock, fake eyelashes locked behind plexiglass, along with lotion and nail polish. At another grocery store, $14 bags of coffee under lock and key. What is this? Um, I don't know. I don't understand why coffee. I don't oh, know. here she is. But oh. It's, <laughs> it's become kind of like a police state in San Francisco. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's not part of city life. It's not part of the way people should be living, right? And that includes folks who are committing the crimes. Marjan Phil, our mom of three, small business and community advocate, says these visible problems in her city are leading to renewed activism driven by residents, like the recall of the city's district attorney last year. I think what we've seen, uh, especially in the past couple of years, is less tolerance, more exasperation, and more movement to action by everyday San Franciscans to change how their city is run. It's not enough right now, but there is a change, and I think ultimately we will get there. San Francisco City Supervisor Matt Dorsey, former police spokesman and recovering drug addict, sees the rampant shoplifting as a systemic problem, from city leaders to an understaffed police force to the fentanyl crisis. When you're seeing that level of retail theft that tends to be subsistence level retail theft. People, people are, who are hungry. People are hungry. There is a level of addiction playing out in many parts of our city. It's happening at levels we really haven't seen in San Francisco. What I'm hearing from my residents and what I'm hearing from San Franciscans is it's time for tough love. We are not doing any addict in this city favors by enabling behavior that is potentially deadly in ways we have never seen. Now, in a statement to CNN, Walgreens says it is focused on safety and preventative measures, but that retail theft remains one of its top challenges. Here's some important context, though, on the city, Aaron. Uh, property crime and violent crime at the end of last year was actually lower than it was before the pandemic. So what's going on here? Low-level drug use, as well as the sort of retail theft, may be considered lower-level crimes, but they're uniformly and widely felt by so many.